So I'd like to introduce our next speaker. Our next speaker, Dr. John Joyce, is not only an experienced marine uh, biologist and diver, but also an award-winning uh, science writer and cartoonist. John was formerly the communications manager of the Marine Institute of Galway. Uh, I'm retired in 2012, in January, to focus on marine education projects and to set up a publishing imprint, Spindrift Press. He is currently the uh, member of the steering committee of the European Marine Science Educators Association, an area leader uh, for the European projects Sea for Society, and an author of four books and four children's books about the sea. Uh, these books include Captain Cockle series and the Black Black John and the Bogus Pirate Cartoon Workbook of Marine Beasts. And now to announce the themes for today's event, uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. John Joyce. Right, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as Owen said, I've worked for most of my life in the educational side of marine science. And in those years that I've worked, I must have been to hundreds, if not thousands, of meetings. But I truly believe that this meeting today is one of the most important that I will ever attend and speak at. And let me tell you why. We live on a planet that we call Earth. This is the conventional picture you'll see of Earth when uh, people say that's where we live. But for me, that's like looking at a very good friend from the back of their head and not looking in their face at all. In fact, what we might be thinking of is planet ocean. Because if we look at the Earth from the other side, from over the Pacific, that is what we see, literally a blue planet. The sea covers 71% of our Earth's surface. That's well over two-thirds. It contains 97% of our planet's water. It's essential for the production of oxygen and the absorption of carbon dioxide. In fact, every second breath that you take was created by microorganisms called plankton in the sea. So it's essential for that, too. It plays a key role in weather and climate. It's home to almost half of all living things. The sea provided 98.2 million tons of fish and shellfish in 2011. It transports 95% of the goods that move around the world. 95% of everything that's in this room came here by sea. It's an important source of oil, gas, and minerals, and it's also a rich source of renewable energy, which we'll go into later on. And 60% of the world's population lives within 60 kilometers of the sea, as we certainly do here in Dublin. The ocean contains four kilometer high mountains and trenches up to 11 kilometers deep. And yet, we know virtually, and I can say this because I'm retired, feck all about it. More people have visited the moon than have visited the deepest oceans. Only 5% of the seabed has ever been seen by human eyes. And up to 100 years ago, we believed that below about 200 feet, below the reach of, sea, of sunlight, there was no life whatsoever. And that's been turned over by the discoveries we made along the mid-Atlantic ridges, where we find animals that are actually growing by heat. They use heat as energy, not sunlight. So we need to know more. We have this incredible resource, probably the most valuable resource on the planet, and that, is, as I say, we know very, very little about it. Now, that's not to say that people haven't tried to educate people. In America, you have the National Marine Educators Association. In Europe, you have the European Marine Science Educators Association, of which I'm a part, and also you have national marine bodies. In the Marine Institute, where I used to work, we had the Explorers Program for primary school education. We roped in uh, various other bodies, like the educational centers. Black Rock Education Center was a member. So was Galway, the various aquaria. We provided materials and all this, this sort of thing to get people interested in the sea at an early age. Then, when I retired, my own modest contribution is the Black John the Bogus Pirate Workbook of Marine Beasts. And that's aimed at teaching people all about the sea by teaching them to draw. But that sort of education is limited. That's limited to the size of a class in a room or the number of people who read a book. And for something which is as fundamentally important to the survival of humankind on this planet as the sea, we need a new approach. And that's where you come in. We need a global education. 
And this is what computer games can do, and that's why I think it's so important and it's so exciting for me to be here with you, because you represent the other side of this equation. You represent the computer games. Computer games, after all, give us worldwide coverage. They create communities. Anyone ever played Tribes or uh, Minecraft will know that. But they created communities. It, they create excitement. They engage you. They get you in the thought process. They create new ideas and solutions. And they educate the world through play, through having fun, which is the best and most efficient way of learning. And I want to talk about four issues that we'd like you to look at when you design your computer games. The first one is sustainable commercial fishing. And don't worry if you know nothing about this. You can research this. The Marine Institute will provide mentors in each of these areas to help you. And the main issues here are that demand for food worldwide is growing at an alarming rate. In fact, a billion people across the globe rely on fish as their main source of protein. But wild fish stocks are under pressure. We're fishing too many fish out of the sea. 80% of the world's fish stocks are depleted. And yet world consumption could rise to 160 million tons by the year 2030, which isn't that far away. So how on earth can we meet that need? What we can do is we can reduce bycatch. Bycatch is a word to describe the fish that you don't actually target by catch by accident, and then very wastefully throw them away. That's called discarding. That's one of the major issues for commercial fishing today. We can also develop sustainable fi fish farming, sustainable aquaculture, and there are many issues around that which you could actually incorporate into a very interesting game. The next issue is limiting marine debris and pollution and the things that we throw into the sea. In spite of the sea being such a living and important and fragile resource, because we know so little about it, we're much, much too careless about it. Plastics go into the sea. Substances like oil and toxic chemicals go into the sea. Sewage goes into the sea. Heat goes into the sea from cooling stations. And underwater noise goes into the sea. If I can represent that graphically, for instance, plastics are one of the biggest problems. You have marine birds eating plastics and dying of starvation. You have diving birds like cormorants getting their heads stuck in that six-pack holder that people throw into the sea. You have fish getting caught in plastic fishing nets that are caught on the bottom of the sea and no longer fishing. That's called ghost fishing. They get caught in the net and they simply rot and die. You get turtles mistaking plastic bags in the ocean for jellyfish, eating them, choking and dying. And you get cod on the bottom of the sea mistaking those plastic cups that people throw into the oceans for squid moving along, eating them, and again dying. And if that wasn't enough, you get plastics being ground down into micro pellets, and then marine animals eating them, and again dying of starvation. So plastics is a very, very important factor. Then there's the issues of climate change. You've got industry, and indeed human dwellings, producing carbon dioxide going up into the atmosphere. That then gets dissolved into seawater, it makes carbonic acid, which makes the seawater more acidic, and tiny little animals, which create calcium shells around themselves for protection, suddenly find that the seawater is too acid for them to make those shells. So they can't make them anymore, and they die. So that's an important issue as well. Then we have the issues of wave and tidal energy. And the amazing fact is, if we could just harness only 0.1% of the renewable energy, say the tidal power or the wave power, in the oceans and convert that to electricity, we would actually satisfy world demand for electricity five times over. So that's an incredible challenge. We can use tidal power, we can use wave power, we can use offshore wind. Tidal power actually isn't such an old invention for Ireland, or such a new invention. In fact, the monks up in Strangford Lock used to use tidal power to grind their corn hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But now in Strangford Lock, that mechanism on the right is what is operating now with huge turbines underwater which are powered by the tide going in and out. That's completely clean, free, and renewable energy. 
Ireland is actually in a place where the wave energy climate in terms of the actual energy in the ocean is one of the highest in the world. So what we need to do is we need to start developing devices that will actually stand up to the waves, create energy from the waves, and transport it back to shore. And these are two that the Marine Institute was helping to develop with uh, private entrepreneurs. One is called the OE Boy, which is the one there on the left, and the other one is called Wave Bob. And they were both experimented with in Galway Bay there. But there's a lot of challenges with wave energy. It's an incredibly challenging operating environment. For instance, you spend a couple of million dollars on a prototype, and then you put it into one of the most dangerous environments in the world, into the sea in a rough conditions. How do you make it stay there? How do you stop it smashing into the shore? How do you actually get the energy from the device to the shore? What about other people who want to use that space, marine spatial planning? What about environmental impact of these devices and the actual cost effectiveness? If you could create a game that would bring all those factors together, that would be extremely interesting. So, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, it's really over to you. Are we thinking about planet Earth or are we thinking about planet oceans? And why I think this meeting is so important is that I'm now talking to the people who can take that message globally and transmit it all across the world to create a planet ocean environment. And I wish you every luck with the project. You can get more information on the Marine Institute website. If you like the cartoons, you can see them on spindriftbreast.com. So thanks again for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. And does